The Unix environment has been around for about half a century already, so it's a quite uh, venerable um, operating system. Uh, it was written in the first version was written in the early 1970s in assembler at um, AT&T Bell Labs by Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. And then in 1973, it was rewritten in C. It was one of the uh, earliest operating systems that was written in a high level or was rewritten in a high level programming language and therefore became more easily portable to other hardware and became more widely available in the second half of the 1970s and uh, at which time uh, quite a lot of uh, computer science students became familiar with it when they did internships at Bell Labs and because uh, for legal reason the owner of the Unix operating system, the AT&T Corporation, wasn't allowed because of the telephony monopoly that they had to commercialize it. Uh, they gave away the source code to academic researchers and in particular at Berkeley University another incarnation of Unis was built on top of this code that became known as the Berkeley Software Distribution or the BSD Unix and AT&T itself developed a version known as System 5 Unix in the 1980s and both of these versions became the basis for a number of commercial workstation and mainframe operating systems from companies like uh, Sun, Hewlett-Packard, IBM, Silicon Graphics. Um, that diversity of Unix implementations then caused portability problems. Every manufacturer did a few details uh, differently, which is a nuisance for application programmers. So in the late 1980s, there was a international standardization effort to bring together all these different uh, Unix API versions. Uh, there were actually two such efforts, the portable operating system interface based on Unix project, also known as POSIX, and a separate effort called the single Unix specification. And they were finally merged in 2001. Another important development that happened at around the same time uh, was that uh, free versions of Unix uh, became available. Uh, Richard Stallman at MIT, uh, a programmer there, um, initiated in the 1980s a project called GNU, GNU is not Unix, that had the ambition to build a uh, version of Unix that was unencumbered by uh, commercial copyright restrictions such that programmers had access to the source code of all the software they used. And while the GNU project itself never came up with a full operating system, they provided many of the building blocks, most notably a C compiler, a very powerful editor, a debugger, a standard C library, and many of the re open source re-implementations of many of the classic Unix tools that we talk about here. And then in the early 90s, the problem of the missing open source kernel was solved independently in two ways. There was a uh, computer science undergraduate student at the University of Helsinki, Linus Torvalds, who wrote a hobby project to write a a freely available POSIX compatible kernel that later became nicknamed as Linux and that quickly attracted a large crowd of contributors that ported many of the existing GNU tools onto it and that also quickly uh, created some industry interest. Commercial companies jumped up and started packaging up uh, Linux distributions with installation scripts and the kernel and many of the GNU tools and ported other available free software from academic projects. Likewise, the University of Berkeley made an effort to clean up the their BSD Unix version in order to have a variant of BSD Unix that was unencumbered by commercial 
uh, copyrighted code from AT&T and that was completed also in the early 90s and several volunteer projects have sprung up since then to maintain uh, modern day versions of Berkeley Unix, uh, most notably uh, FreeBSD and OpenBSD. Uh, I haven't heard much about the NetBSD project recently, but I don't know whether that still exists. But FreeBSD, there's a large number of developers here at the uh, computer laboratory, uh, colleagues of Robert Watson uh, on my corridor here. and. OpenBSD is done by the same people who, for example, also maintain the OpenSSH tool. In uh, the year 2000, when Steve Jobs returned to Apple, Apple decided they need a newer modern operating system. And they built this by the code name of Darwin. And uh, that was based on the uh, CMU uh, microkernel operating system Mach, on top of which uh, large parts of the BSD operating system uh, were ported. And because MacOS has under the hood now this POSIX compatible operating system, uh, a lot of volunteer projects emerged in order to port many of the standard open source uh, Unix tools onto MacOS. So if you're a macOS user, you may want to look into operating into tool distributions such as in particular Homebrew. This is perhaps the today most popular one, but there are a couple of others called Fink and uh, Mac ports where all the things that you find no normally with a Linux distribution are quite easily also available uh, via Homebrew or Fink or Mac ports on a macOS system. Um, this entire open source uh, concept that uh, people made some effort to have freely available versions of the Unix tools. Um, there's a couple of different uh, licensing concepts that have been uh, used. There is first of all the notion if you publish some software, you can declare it to be in the public domain. You waive all copyrights. In practice, this is not very commonly done um, because it can come with uh, a couple of problems in some jurisdictions. Uh, in many European countries, there is no notion of public domain. You can't actually uh, waive the uh, inherent rights that the law gives to anyone who writes some uh, literary work or some software. Um, so in uh, the closest equivalent of this that are licenses that allow anyone to do anything they want have come out of the, uh, of the Berkeley software distribution uh, project, a so-called BSD license. And similarly, MIT in the US also has published in the 1980s a lot of open source software, most notably the X window system. And they also developed a license that allow anyone to copy, redistribute, modify the software under two conditions. You have to uh, preserve the original copyright notice such that there is no doubt who wrote the software originally. This is to prevent that some company uh, uses some public domain software, uh, includes it into their own proprietary product, and then the company lawyers somehow forget that this was actually uh, taken from elsewhere and then start enforcing copyright to code, to code that they never owned originally. There have been a couple of famous uh, lawsuits where this was a problem and therefore it has become uh, important practice even if you use free software to still attribute where you got it from that the ownership is uh, not in question. And also in the United States in particular with product liability uh, legislation, uh, it has become popular in these software licenses to uh, disclaim uh, warranty rights. Uh, so if you use the software, you promise not to sue the author over any software quality 
issues. Again, whether this is possible or not depends a little bit from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Richard Stallman had a much more uh, interesting idea than just formalizing the notion of public domain software like the MIT and BSD licenses did. And this became known as the GNU General Public License. This is a kind of viral open source license uh, that requires that in addition to uh, uh, being able to freely use and modify the software, the license also binds anyone who modifies the software to make the modifications again freely available under the conditions of the general public license. So if you use any component of GPL protected software in your own software, your own software again has to be uh, made freely available. You can't make a proprietary fork of a software. And since then, uh, numerous refinements and variants of these licenses have been written and are widely used, most notably the Apache license, for example, or the Eclipse license. And if you want to publish some uh, open source software yourself, you may want to uh, go to the opensource.org website, which gives you a good overview and introduction of many of these standard licenses that are currently used today, not just for Unix tools, but for many other software projects beyond that.